Good morning, lit students. How many of you have had those are you kidding moments in life? I mean, those kinds of moments where you can imagine you're walking down the street, you have your ice cream cone, and then like the ice cream top just falls right off, right onto the ground, and you're just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> or another example, you know, you're playing video games, and this guy comes out of the corner, and he's just like, assassinate, and he just kills you, and you're like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, did that guy just do that? Or it might even be like a friend that you had, and they accidentally did a friendly fire, you know? Life is filled with all those different are you kidding me kinds of moments. But then sometimes there's days where the theme of the whole entire day seems to be one of those are you kidding me days. You know, like everything you seem to try to do just comes right back at you. It comes back in your face and it's just like, are you kidding me right now? Sometimes it's not just like a moment or even a day. But sometimes there's even periods of our lives that seem like, are you kidding me, periods of lives. Periods of lives where things just become overwhelming. You know, maybe it's a, a big thing happens to you or to a friend of yours um, or to a family member. And it's just a, a very uh, frustrating thing. It has a lot of pressure and you just start feeling overwhelmed because of it. And then there's times where people feel like their whole life is themed by that kind of a pressure. You know, that their life is just overwhelming them in general. So the question I want us to be thinking about today is what do we do with those kinds of things? You know, those overwhelming moments or periods of our lives. You know, how can we deal with this kind of stuff? And could there be a bigger picture behind these things? Could God actually have a purpose for these periods of our lives? I want to take a moment to think back to Joseph. You know, we've been talking about Joseph and um, his life and his story. And so think for a moment about his situation in life. Okay. So we know that Joseph was brother and he had uh, 12 different brothers. So that's a lot of stress right there in, in itself. You know, that could be overwhelming on its own. But he was a stepbrother. So he had a lot of stepbrothers. He also was his favorite, uh, the favorite of his father. And the thing is, is that his mom was the, the mom that his dad actually loved, which probably adds to the situation and adds to the anger and frustration his stepbrothers had towards him. So he's just in an awkward situation in life. And then you can also think about the awkwardness he may have been facing with his stepmom, realizing who his mom was. So again, a lot of really awkward situations, a lot of overwhelming kinds of things that Joseph is facing in his life. And then to add on top of it, his dad ends up giving him that coat of many colors that makes his brothers hate him that much more. They even want to kill him because of it. Now, with an exception of the coat of many colors and everything, some of you guys might be able to identify with this stuff because you've been in situations similar to that. You know, you have a, a stepmom or a stepdad or step siblings, and you know the awkwardness that can come with that and sometimes the pressure that comes with that as well and how it can feel overwhelming at times. Or perhaps there's this pressure where you want to impress other people. Um, you know, remember that Joseph, you know, he probably wanted to impress his father and he also wanted to impress his brothers. You know, why else was he telling them about this dream that he had and everything, those dreams. So there's those kinds of pressures. And honestly, I think those are just natural pressures that people face, especially as teenagers. And that's another pressure that Joseph had to face. You know, he was a teen and he had to deal with the uh, overwhelming emotions that come with that at times. And so you can identify with Joseph on several of these different ends. But for Joseph, it didn't just end there. You know, after his brothers got so jealous of him, they decided that they were actually going to sell him into slavery. And we talked about that last week a little bit. So they sold him into slavery. And that point marked a, a trend for the rest of his life where he was facing overwhelming uh, circumstances. You know, you see the first thing that ends up happening is he's uh, sold to Potiphar, uh, who is the, the captain of Pharaoh's guard, you know? And so he's sold over to him and, and that's kind of a situation, a high end kind of an individual. Um, and he's sold as a slave. So that's a really 
uh, stressful thing right there. Um, but then, you know, Pharaoh, and, or not Pharaoh, Potiphar ends up making uh, Joseph the head of everything that he owned. You know, he put him in charge of absolutely everything. So again, there's more pressure. There's more opportunities to be overwhelmed. But the thing is, is that we see in that kind of situation, then later on he's uh, thrown into prison, but then he's given responsibility in the prison. You know, the prison guard puts him in charge of everything. Um, and then we see it again, it goes to uh, Pharaoh. You know, he's brought before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh ends up making him second command in all of Egypt. The thing is, is that you see this trend through uh, Joseph's life, you know, Bad things happen, overwhelming situations happen, but we don't see him react in a way where he gives up or he throws in the towel. And we don't see him getting angry at God and blaming God for the things that are happening in his life. But we see a different kind of response, and that's kind of what I kind of what I want us to be focusing in on is what did Joseph actually do in these situations? How did he get through all of this stress and all these emotions? Well, the one thing that we see that Joseph did through all of this is that he believed that God had a plan, that God had a bigger picture, and he was determined that he was going to be a part of it. You know, he was determined that he was going to follow after God and be a part of his, God's bigger plan, big picture for his life. So we go back to whenever Joseph was first sold as a slave to Potiphar, you know, he was given all of these different kinds of responsibilities. And you can think about what are the reactions he could have had? You know, what's the attitude he could have had? Well, he could have been thinking about it in this way. Like, why do I care about what God's going to do for me? Why do I care about trying to please him in my life? Why do I put effort into this stuff? I was just sold as a slave. You know, my brothers just did this. And didn't God allow me to be sold as a slave? So why would I care about him? But rather than turning the situation into uh, blaming God for it and getting angry at God for the situation, he ended up doing his best in the job that he had. You know, he had served Potiphar to the best that he could. And, you know, God was blessing him. And God blessed him as the servant of Potiphar. And so that's why he ended up being given um, a special position in Potiphar's household. Because Joseph was determined that he was going to continue believing in God, continue believing that God still had a plan for him, and that he was going to live in reflection of that, no matter what happened in his life. Um, and then we go on in that situation, and it continues. You know, there's Potiphar's wife, and she brings a whole different kind of a pressure into the situation because, you know, she tries to seduce him. And she keeps on trying and keeps on trying, keeps on trying. And so he has to resist moral temptation, that pressure in that direction. And whenever we read in scripture, we see that the reason why he resists is because he honors the position God had given him and he honors the God who he is serving. So he doesn't give up on God and all of that. And so he ends up resisting. And then we see the situation, you know, escalate because um, Joseph is ends up being sent to prison because of it. You know, he is falsely accused because of something that he did, which was good, which was right. So then at that point, you might be thinking like, okay, so Joseph, like, God allowed you to be sold into slavery once. Then he gave you a good position. Okay, so cool. He gave you a... a a, a position, an okay position. You're still a slave, but still, you got a position. But then he allows you to get falsely accused. Like, come on, like, you need to just give up on God now. But Joseph still doesn't give up on God. And so God ends up giving him a position in the prison even. Even in prison, God is still with him and is still protecting him and honoring him. And so that's a thing that we can think about for our own lives. You know, whatever situation we're in in our lives, are we going to trust God and cling to him, believing that he has a bigger picture uh, for us, that he has a plan no matter what's going on around us and no matter what we feel, we still cling to that belief and that hope that he does have a plan for us. 
Um, and so we see that Joseph, even in prison, you know, God gives him that position. He continues persevering in his faith, so to say, his faith in God. And then, you know, this, uh, these two uh, servants of Pharaoh come in, okay? And they have these dreams. And then we also see that Joseph he goes to God in the midst of the situations. That's the second thing that he did. And that's because he be, he has this bigger picture. He believes that God is sovereign. God's in control. God knows what's going on. So whenever I'm facing an overwhelming situation and I don't know what to do, I believe that God does know what to do. So I'm going to go to him in that situation. And so with the dreams that these guys have, you know, Joseph ends up saying, hey, you know what? I believe that God can interpret these dreams for you and he can help you guys out. So let me go to God for you and let me see see what God says. So God ends up interpreting the dreams um, through Joseph and um, ends up helping out one of the servants, you know, um, brings that servant relief and that servant is restored back to Pharaoh, um, back to his position. Now this was Joseph's hope though. Joseph was hoping and uh, relying on this servant to remember him so that he could get out of prison, you know? Even though he was in a good situation in the prison, he didn't want to stay in prison, which, my book, that's understandable. But the servant forgets him. He just helped the guy out tremendously, and the guy forgets him. So that would be frustrating. But still, even in the lapse of time, while Joseph is waiting and waiting and waiting for this servant to remember, he believes and trusts that God will uh, remember him, that God knows him, that God remembers him, and that God will bring him to the memory of the servant whenever it was the right time. And that's what ends up happening. You know, then there's this famine that's about to hit, and then we see that uh, the servant remembers and the servant goes to Pharaoh and tells him about Joseph and then Joseph ends up being brought before Pharaoh um, is faithful again to pursue after God and to trust in God in the situation he interprets the dream through God's power for Pharaoh and then he's given that position where he's second command so what I'm hoping you guys are seeing is this theme throughout this throughout Joseph's life this theme of, I believe that God has the bigger picture. He knows the big picture and he hasn't forgotten about me. And you know what? Even when things are overwhelming, God is still there. And I'm going to trust that he's there and I'm going to pursue after him. And I believe that eventually in his timing and in his will, you know, he will remember me, you know, and he will help me through this situation. So I want you guys to remember that in your own situations in life. Whenever you feel overwhelmed, think think about it like, could God have a bigger picture? Could God be using this for a specific purpose? And I believe that he does. Um, every situation we come across in our lives, he does have a purpose for that situation. But sometimes it takes time before we can see it. Um, and then sometimes... We never really get a full picture of what that actually was, what the purpose behind it was. But one thing that is sure, no matter what, if we seek God and rely on him in the midst of every kind of overwhelming situation, he does grow us in our faith as we learn to trust him with whatever it is. And that's the biggest thing that could possibly happen for any of us because ultimately our faith is the thing that secures us in him and that's the thing that um, God will give us salvation through our faith in him. And so those are just some things for you to think about, you know. I um, mean, you read it throughout scripture, throughout the New Testament, especially how it talks about how the trials that we face, the suffering that we face produces endurance and it produces character and it produces uh, a pure faith in us so that we can know him and so that we can know his salvation. So those are a few things that I just wanted to throw out there for you guys to be thinking about this Sunday. Um, and another thing that I want you to think about as uh, you're thinking about Joseph and your own life is like with Joseph, at the very end, what do we see happen? You know, it started with 
his brothers selling him into slavery, something that was horrendous, something that was absolutely overwhelming. But then in the end, his brothers come back to him and they're asking him for food and he tells them, you know, basically, don't be bothered by this. Don't be devastated by this thing because guess what? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. For good. God is the one who put me in this position so that I could save others and so that I could save you. And so that's what we see happening. We see that while Joseph had experienced these overwhelming situations, he maintained his faith throughout that time. And then in the end, he realized that God did have that big picture, you know, and he trusted God in that. And that's what he was saying. He's saying, you know what, what you meant for evil, God means for good. God has a plan. He's a good father. He's a good God. And he, he will honor those who love him. And Joseph knew that because he had honored him throughout that time, God had given him that position so that he could bring him glory. And so I want to just encourage you guys to do that in your own lives. Trust that as you are faithful to God and as you remain in your faith in him, that he will remember you and he will be faithful to you. And that he will give you the strength you need to get through those situations so that you can experience his glory in the end. So those are just a few thoughts that I wanted to throw out to you guys. I want to encourage you to go ahead and read through uh, the story of Joseph if you haven't done that um, recently. And especially, I want you to focus in on uh, chapter 45 and verses 5 through 8. In verse 5 and 8, this is where Joseph tells us, he says, and now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And so just remember that whatever situation we face in life, you know, God does have a purpose for us in it and he can grow us through it. Even if it's a, a bad situation, a difficult situation, an overwhelming kind of a situation, God is still there with us and he wants to grow us even through our frustrations. So trust God, seek him in every moment and open your mind and your heart to see that he has a big picture, both for this world and for your own life. Hope you guys have a great Sunday.